Well, hey there, Stanwell Foursquare. My name's Josh, and I get the pleasure of working with our middle school students. And my name is Caden, and I work here with our high school students. And we are so excited to bring you the news that even though camp is not going to be happening like normal, you were not going to be able to stop us from having a camp experience. So we will be having a digital camp experience this year. Online camp? Online camp. That's amazing. It's, it's going to be unbelievable. We're going to have speakers. We're going to have games. And when's that going to happen, Caden? July 23rd through the 25th. And if you didn't know, these games are, you're going to be competing against churches all across America in this online Foursquare camp. It's going to be awesome. We are so excited. So make sure you go to our website and you click on the link so that you can sign up. And the best part about this camp, it is absolutely free. Zero dollar. So make sure to sign up. We look forward uh, to enjoying this time together. Well, hello, Foursquare. Hey, Pastor Tim here. If we haven't had a chance to meet, that's who I am. Uh, hey, we, I just wanted to give you kind of a, an update about where we're at in our reopening. And as, as things have unfolded, we all know that things have changed quickly. It looks like Island County uh, is going to be moving ahead in phases. Snohomish County is moving ahead in phases. So what we want to do as a church, we, we sure want to be agile and be able to meet as soon as we can in our building. But one thing we've done is we've really diligently looked through and trying to to, to be responsible uh, as we hear that, uh, you know, some churches are opening and there's been big outbreaks of COVID in some of those churches. We want to be really wise and responsible and make sure that we're all healthy um, because we're continuing to gather together. We're continuing to teach the word, but we want to do it in a responsible, wise manner. We've been able to do some of these outdoor gatherings. Uh, we've had great attendance and participation. So if we've looked at what it's going to take for us to move inside of our building, it's just, it's a really daunting challenge to figure out how to do that well, how to do that responsibly, that honors both you, honors the rules of, of the, that we find ourselves in, and honor God in the midst of all of that. So here's what we're going to do. And, and we've had so many people showing up to our outdoor services to be able to even fit those people in our buildings with some of the, uh, the restrictions, we would have to add multiple services and it would just be a little bit of a challenge. So we're gonna take advantage of some of this summer weather and here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna do outdoor services July 12th, 19th, and 26th. And then that gives us some time to kind of evaluate and see where things are as everything is changing all the time. But this is awesome. Is on January, or excuse me, July 12th, we're gonna do baptisms at our outdoor service. So I've never baptized people in the parking lot of Viking Village, but we're doing it July 12th. And we're so excited because the kingdom of God is growing. People are meeting Jesus. We've had many who say, I wanna be baptized. So if that's you, you say, hey, I wanna be baptized in the parking lot on July 12th. Would you email the church, info at, at forestq.church. Give us a call at the office, leave a voicemail. We'd love to partner with you and uh, see what God's going to do. So remember, July 12th, July 19th, and July 26th, we're going to do outdoor services. And uh, that'll give us some time to kind of see where we're at. And uh, long for the day when we get to meet back in our building. But here's the great thing. We're going to meet in our living rooms. We're going to meet in the parking lot. We're going to be about meeting and teaching the truths of Jesus, whether it's in our living room, whether it's in the parking lot whether it's in a building or wherever it is. The church has never been closed. It's never been stopped. We are the people of God moving forward and becoming more like Jesus every day. So looking forward to continue to meet as we, uh, boy, love each other and be the church. God bless. Hello and welcome to Stanwood Foursquare Online. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are really excited about our service elements for today. But I just wanted to reiterate, as Pastor Tim just shared, in the month of July, starting July 12th, we are going to be doing our drive up services. We'll be still hosting online, but we'll also have that in-person option. And I wanted to remind you again that on July 12th, if you would like to take the next step in your faith journey by getting baptized, we would love to make that happen for you. You can contact us at the church office by calling or emailing us at the info at stanwoodfoursquare.com email. We would love for that to happen for you on July 12th. It's going to be a great Sunday of celebration. And then for today, just wanted to remind you of a few things happening on our online service 
Hopefully you had a second to hop in the chat, say good morning, say hello, maybe send a little waving emoji um, to all your friends, all your church family members who are gathering with us today. Also on this online page at the top, you will find a virtual connect card. We would love to partner with you in prayer. And that is a place where you can put a praise report or a prayer request. And then also you should see at the bottom of the page, there is a place for live prayer. And at any point during our service, if you would like someone to pray with you, go ahead and click on that and one of our service hosts will hop into a separate individual chat with you so they can pray with you. And then I just want to say on behalf of our church, thank you so much for your generous giving. We are so grateful for the things that we get to do in mission or on mission with God because of your generous giving. And so at the top of this page, there's a link where you can give online. It's a super safe and easy way to do that. You can also give on our church app or snail mail, still super efficient. You can go ahead and send your gift in the mail to us at the church. And we just love getting to worship together. So let's just take a moment. We're going to sing some songs, sing some praises to our God. But let's just take a moment, quiet ourselves wherever we're at. I know we're at home, maybe we're in our living room with our family. Let's just take a second and just prepare ourselves for worship. So God, we just, we love you. We are so grateful for today. And we just choose to fix our eyes on you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. It's in your name we pray. Amen. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken Oh, I won't be shaken And my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shaken Oh, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name There's power in your name My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your
break the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain that I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope, it's hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, God, you are my living hope. My living hope.
I love the song that we just sang. It's basically declaring and we're singing almost the entire gospel, the story of God and him sending us Jesus. And I specifically love this line in the song that we sang. It says, the work is finished and the end is written, that Jesus Christ, you are my living hope. And I love that line, the end is written, that we know that the end is Jesus winning that Jesus has the victory over sin and death and darkness, and that when we choose to put our trust in Jesus, when we choose to follow him, that we get to stand in that ending with him. We get to choose to stand in the victory with him, that we get to be confident of the hope that we have. We may not know exactly what our future holds, but we have hope in the victory that is Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me today? Jesus, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you. We praise you for the good things that we just sang about, that you stepped down from your place in heaven, from your throne, to wear my sin and bear my shame. God, we thank you that you call us your own, that you are our savior, that you chose us, and that we are yours forever, that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. And we praise you because you set us free. We praise you, and we trust you with our lives, and we put our our hope in you, Jesus, because you have the victory. The end is written, and we are confident of that in you. Jesus, we love you, and we praise you, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name's Jonathan. If I haven't had a chance to meet you before, I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And today I get the pleasure of launching us into our summer series as we go through the life of Joseph. And Joseph is one of these incredible figures that we find in the Old Testament and back in the book of Genesis, starting in chapter 37. He's he's one of these characters um, who is just as important, maybe one of the most significant, important figures that we find in all of Old Testament scripture. He's the great-grandson of Abraham. You know, Father Abraham, who had many, many sons. Well, Joseph is from that line. And and Joseph has this story, this really incredible story. It's like a, a roller coaster of his life where he has incredible highs and some incredible lows. And through all of that, Joseph maintains character. He maintains faithfulness. He, he maintains his devotion uh, to God. And, and we can see through the story of Joseph just the, the fingerprint of God, that the handwork of God move in incredible, in incredible ways. Now, if you're like me, uh, when you read a story, you love the suspense of a story. You love the mystery, the intrigue. You love the twists and the turns. You love not necessarily knowing how everything is going to work out. That's one of my favorite things about movies. I love watching movies that have this great aha moment at the end where you're like, I did not see that coming. Right? I, I love stories like that. 
But I know some of you out there um, are quite different, where the twists and the turns and, and, and all of the suspense and the mystery just is like gut-wrenching to you, right? Like you hate not knowing how something is going to turn out. So I, I thought I would appeal to that today as we launched this series. I thought maybe we would start with the end and, and see how things wrap up. And, and that could set the framework of how we think of Joseph, how we think of his life as we go through the summer and read and see how God used this man to do so many incredible things. If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to open up to Genesis. We're going to be in chapter 50, starting in verse 15. But before we get reading today, I have to let you know of a few things that, that kind of set up this story. And, and so it's kind of like I should say, spoiler alert. I'm, I'm going to give you some spoils of the story, of things that we're going to read a little later on in weeks to come, but all to set up the grand narrative, the, the good, big context of the life of Joseph. See, number one, the first thing that we have to know about Joseph is this. He is his dad's favorite son, hands down. He, his daddy's number one boy. His dad loved him so much, actually, that he, he made, he hand-woven uh, his own jacket, this beautiful coat made of many, many colors, um, made specially for his son. Now, being a dad of two daughters, I can tell you there is a great mistake when you play favorites with your kiddos, right? Any parent knows there is a mistake when you play favorites with your kids, even though I know that I am my parents' favorite kid. Um, we won't get into that right now, but that's important for us to know as we navigate the story. Joseph is, he, he's the apple of his father's eye. He is loved. His brothers even recognize that he is loved a little differently than everybody else in the family. The second thing that we have to understand is Joseph kept having these dreams really early on when he was a young man. When he was a boy, he, he had different dreams of everybody in his family, dad, mom, and brothers bowing down to him. Now, kind of a weird dream for the youngest in the family uh, to have. Also, side note, you should know younger siblings. If you ever have a dream that involves your older siblings bowing down and worshiping you, you should probably keep that to yourself. I don't think good things will come out of you sharing that with everybody, but that's a story, that's a lesson that Joseph gets to learn. The third thing is this, because of one and two, Joseph's brothers hated him. They grew very bitter with him. They, they grew very frustrated with him. And, and as we'll see in weeks to come, as we'll go through the stories, you, you can see how that frustration, that anger, that bitterness plays out in their family story. But for this purpose today, we have to know that they hated him so much that they actually plotted to kill him. And, and when that plan was kind of foiled, when some sense or some reason was spoken in to that plan, they actually decided to not kill him, but that they would sell him into slavery instead. So the 17-year-old kid, betrayed by his older brothers, sold into slavery. We have to understand that. Number four is this, that through Joseph's story, through his life, um, a lot of things happened to him, but, but for, for the purpose of today, one of the things I, I want us to understand is this, is that God continued to show up and be faithful to Joseph, and Joseph continued to be obedient to God. And because of that, God elevated Joseph to be the second in power, the second in command in all of Egypt, that he answered only to Pharaoh. And if you, you know anything about this time and this place in world history, Egypt was the superpower. They were the biggest uh, um, mega power country in its time. Um, and, and Joseph, this Hebrew boy sold into slavery, God elevated him to answer only to Pharaoh. That will be important as we continue on. And then finally this. Joseph was 17 years old when he was sold into slavery, when, when he was separated and tossed away from his family. He was 17 years old. His dad thought actually that he had been murdered. And about 30 to 40 years has passed since um, 
uh, his interaction that we're about to read, uh, this interaction that he has with his family. We're going to pick up in the story where Joseph now as a man comes across his brothers. And after the years uh, of um, separation, the years of everything that Joseph had, had, Joseph had been through, the, the, this, the years of, uh, of his brothers knowing what they had done to him. They have this moment, they have this interaction and Joseph could have handled it in a multitude of different ways, but this is the story of Joseph's reconnection with his brothers. It says this in Genesis chapter 50, starting in verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all of the wrongs that we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left us these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs that they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. I want to read that last line one more time. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and he spoke kindly to him. Wow, right? Wow. As we jump over all of these great things and all these things that have happened, we get a glimpse, uh, we get a picture, we get a snapshot of the person of Joseph. We get a, a glimpse of his character and the man that he is when, when he had every right and every ability and every really authority to deal with his brothers in any manner that he wanted to we see grace, we see forgiveness, we see uh, mercy, we see compassion, we see love. And, and all of that, we see the characteristics of God being expressed through a man who's devoted his life to serving God. And I'm excited for this summer as we dive into these stories that, that we see the things that shaped Joseph. We, we see and hear the stories and the circumstances and the situations that shaped this man to be the way that he is. And, and we'll see that his story could have taken him to so many different outcomes. But here's what I want us to hold on to today. You see, Joseph, the story of Joseph is really the story of a man whose faith propelled him from the pit of slavery to the pinnacle of power. It, it propelled him from the pit of slavery, from nothing to the pinnacle of power because of his assurance and his obedience to God. And I think for you and for I today, there's something that, that we can learn. There's some things that we can take away from Joseph. And, and I want to give us a couple characteristics that we see in, in that last section that we just read. I want to give us some characteristics that hopefully will, will shape how we see Joseph and, and how we read these stories. Number one is this. We see Joseph's fortitude. Joseph's for, fortitude. That Joseph continually displayed a great deal of strength, a great deal of fortitude throughout his life. You see, he lived his life with great courage in the face of great pain and great adversity. No matter what was thrown his way, he never allowed it to defeat him. He, he never allowed the circumstances to overwhelm him or to discourage him or to distract him from the things that God had for him. And what I love about this is we can see that, that Joseph understands it wasn't about his strength. It wasn't about what he could do, but he knew that his strength was a supernatural strength. It was a supernatural 
fortitude. He, he really epitomized, he lived out this verse in Ephesians 6.10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. Finally, be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. Joseph lived a life where he was strong in the Lord and, and he was strong in the Lord's power, not because of him, but because of what God was doing. And, and what a story, what a characteristic that is for you and for I today. That, that we could live a life not in our own strength, but in God's strength. Not in our own power, but in God's power. That we wouldn't allow the, the circumstances of our day, the, the situations of our life to have the effect on us, to overwhelm us, to discourage us. A few years back, I had the opportunity to intern with one of my best friends and, and a mentor, a pastor uh, down in San Jose, California. And right before I was about to leave for the summer to, to go actually stay with them as well, I was going to live with him and his wife. Right before I, I left to go down, I got word that his wife, Maggie, a dear friend of mine, um, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. She's a 30-year-old woman, um, great worship leader, had an amazing voice, the biggest, brightest smile you've ever seen, one of the happiest people you'd ever meet in your life. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. And through different conversations and different things uh, that were going on, obviously I was like, well, should I go intern? Should I go stay with you? Is that even an option? Is that, would that be a good thing anymore? And I remember I, I called Morgan and Maggie up and, and I asked them, I said, would it, you know, what does this summer look like? What, what would be best for you guys? And I remember Maggie, she just really clapped back so fast. She's like, well, why wouldn't you come? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you continue to do what was planned to do? Like what's changed almost was, was her mentality. That's what was communicated. That's what came across. And in my mind, I thought, well, everything's changed. But for Maggie, nothing has changed. Nothing changed for her. The diagnosis didn't change her perspective on life. Her circumstance didn't change how she viewed the future. You see, Maggie's fortitude, her strength in the Lord, not herself, continued to, to say, let's live life the way God called us to live life. We're not gonna, we're not gonna take a, a back seat. We're not going to take steps back, but we're going to continue to move forward. And, and for the rest of my life, I will always picture that as an example of not our strength, but a supernatural strength, the supernatural fortitude that God offers to you and to I. You see, the problem is most times when we feel weak, when we feel discouraged, those are indicators to you and to I that we're doing something in our own strength, that we're trying to muscle through a situation. And God is saying, it's not in your own strength, it's in my strength, my supernatural ability that I give to you. Don't be discouraged. Don't feel weak. In your weakness, you are made strong because of who I am. And Joseph and his life is such a great illustration, such a, a living testimony of what it looks like when we stop relying on our strength and we start living in God's strength. That's the first characteristic I think we can learn from Joseph today is Joseph's fortitude. The second thing is this, Joseph's faithfulness. Joseph's faithfulness. Man, if there was ever a story that you read throughout Scripture that would give somebody the, the right or the justification to tap out, to say, I've had enough. I'm ready to be done. God, why are you doing this to me? I think we can see that in the life of Joseph. Brothers betraying him, plotting to kill him, throwing him into slavery, being separated from his, his family for years and years and years. The, the hurt and the pain, the loneliness that Joseph experienced, yet none of that ever allowing his faith to waver. But Joseph always holding on to the hope of who God is, to the confidence that God has a plan for his life. Hebrews 11 chapter, or chapter 11 verse 1, it says this, it says that now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we don't see. Having faith that 
you don't need to know how the story ends. That doesn't dictate how you walk today. That at the end of the road, it could turn out great or it could turn out bad or whatever the case is. But, but the end of the story does, has, has no indicator of, of how today is lived. And, and Joseph lived that out. He said, the hope that I have today is all that I need. The faith that I have in Jesus today, the faith that I have in God today is all that I need. That's what consumes me. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. (laughs) Tomorrow has enough worries, enough stresses, enough anxieties of its own. But I'm going to focus on today. And we see that time and time and time again throughout Joseph's life. Not worrying about tomorrow. Worrying about today, worrying about the things that are in front of me, trusting God, trusting God's faithfulness. And the third thing today that we can take away from the life of Joseph, a characteristic that that we should hang on to is this, Joseph's forgiveness. Joseph's forgiveness, his, his ability to not hold the offense. Now, that's something really easy to say. And as we look and read through a story, it's something really easy. Like, yeah, that's, that's so great. Look at Joseph. Look what he was able to do. I mean, just think. Again, let's take a step back and think. Genesis chapter 50, as we just read, Joseph's words to his brothers were, what you intended to harm me with, what you intended to harm me with, God intended for good. Now, I don't think that you could ever have the kind of forgiveness, the ability to forgive if we don't hold on as Christians, if we don't hold on to that kind of mindset. That there are plenty of things in life that are intended to harm you. Man, we experience situations all the time, almost almost daily that feel like they're, they're intended to harm us, uh, whether it's job situations, maybe it's a, a loose word that's said to a spouse, maybe it's dealing with uh, pain and hurt from, from parents or from teachers or coaches or, or whatever the case may be, that, that there may be real situations that were intended for harm. But Joseph's words here, I think, are so powerful. So what you intended for harm, God used for good. That could it be that throughout our lives, throughout our experiences, throughout our journey of following Jesus, could it be true that God wastes nothing? That that God in his infinite goodness can use even the worst most devastating, most horrific tragedies in our lives. That although it breaks God's heart that that we suffer, it breaks God's heart that we go through those things. Could it be that, that God could still use those things to shape us, to minister to others, to, to, to continue to proclaim the gospel in ways that we would never be able to otherwise. I mean, what we see here in in Joseph's exchange with his brothers, what, what you intended for harm, you guys, God intended for good, and I hold nothing against you. What we see in that exchange is, is almost a foreshadow of the grace that Jesus gives us. He's saying, I, I see your brokenness, I see your hurt, I see your offenses, I see your sin. I see all the ways and and all of the things that you've done to miss the mark. But I don't hold any of that against you. In fact, I I have a great plan for you. In spite of all of those things, that I forgive you, that I have good things for you. Joseph offers his brothers forgiveness. And just upon reading those words and reading this story today. I wonder if there's some things inside of us that it's time to forgive. 
There's some situations that, that we know it, it was intended to harm us. It was intended to hurt. But we're not going to have the perspective that says, I'm allowing those things to control my actions. I'm not going to allow those circumstances to control my words or how I treat others. But I'm going to allow God and his goodness to redeem those horrible things, to be used for God's good plan through my life. And maybe today God is stirring those things in your heart. God is stirring those things. He's bringing those things right to your mind right now as an opportunity to not get mad, to not get bitter, to not be frustrated, to not be discouraged, but saying, God, I release those things to you. God, I forgive that person. God, I forgive that situation. I forgive that circumstance. I forgive my parent. I forgive my spouse. I I forgive those friends who said those loose words. God, I forgive them. And Lord, would you bring about your goodness to redeem this situation, to redeem this relationship, that that we're not going to hold these things against but we're going to be set free by the power of forgiveness. Man, my hope and my prayer as we look through the story of Joseph this summer is that we can look at Joseph's fortitude, his strength in the face of adversity, that we can look at Joseph's faithfulness, that that nothing deterred him, nothing stopped him from trusting God and having a confidence that God was going to bring about his goodness. And finally, his forgiveness to say, no matter what happens, I know who my defender is. I know who I live for. I live for God. And that, because of that, I can forgive you. My prayer is that we would be able to take these characteristics and that God would work those in our hearts and in our lives in the weeks to come. Can I pray for you? Lord, we thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. God, we thank you that it's not in our strength alone that we have to live this life, but you give us a supernatural strength. God, we thank you that in all things, in all of our our mistakes and our, our shortcomings, God, you've forgiven us first. God, we see these things in the story of Joseph, but we also see them in the character of who you are. And God, we pray that you would ingrain those things in us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Well, hello, Foursquare. Hey, Pastor Tim here. If we haven't had a chance to meet, that's who I am. Uh, Hey, I just wanted to give you kind of an update about where we're at in our reopening. And as as things have unfolded, we all know that things have changed quickly. It looks like Island County uh, is going to be moving ahead in phases. Snohomish County is moving ahead in phases. So what we want to do as a church, we we sure want to be agile and be able to meet as soon as we can in our building. But one thing we've done is we've really diligently looked through and trying to to, to be responsible uh, as we hear that, uh, you know, some churches are opening and there's been big outbreaks of COVID in some of those churches. We want to be really wise and responsible and make sure that we're all healthy um, because we're continuing to gather together. We're continuing to teach the word, but we want to do it in a responsible, wise manner. We've been able to do some of these outdoor gatherings. Uh, we've had great attendance and participation. So if we've looked at what it's going to take for us to move inside of our building, it's just, it's a really daunting challenge to figure out how to do that well, how to do that responsibly, that honors both you, honors the rules of, of, of the, that we find ourselves in, and honor God in the midst of all of that. So here's what we're going to do. And, and we've had so many people showing up to our outdoor services. To be able to even fit those people in our buildings with some of the, uh, the restrictions, we would have to add multiple services and it would just be a little bit of a challenge. So we're going to take advantage of some of this summer weather. And here's what we're going to do. We are going to do outdoor services July 12th, 19th, and 26th. And then that gives us some time to kind of evaluate and see where things are as everything is changing all the time. But this is awesome. It's on January, or excuse me, July 12th. We're going to do baptisms at our outdoor service. So 
I've never baptized people in the parking lot of Viking Village, but we're doing it July 12th. And we're so excited because the kingdom of God is growing. People are meeting Jesus. We've had many who say, I want to be baptized. So if that's you, you say, hey, I want to be baptized in the parking lot on July 12th. Would you email the church info at at forestq.church? Give us a call at the office. Leave a voicemail. We'd love to partner with you and uh, see what God's going to do. So remember July 12th. July 19th and July 26th, we're going to do outdoor services, and uh, that'll give us some time to kind of see where we're at, and uh, long for the day when we get to meet back in our building, but here's the great thing. We're going to meet in our living rooms. We're going to meet in the parking lot. We're going to be about meeting and teaching the truths of Jesus, whether it's in our living room, whether it's in the parking lot, whether it's in a building, or wherever it is. The church has never been closed. It's never been stopped. We are the people of God moving forward and becoming more like Jesus every day. So looking forward to continue to meet as we, uh, boy, love each other and be the church. God bless. Well, hey there, Stanwell Foursquare. My name's Josh, and I get the pleasure of working with our middle school students. And my name is Caden, and I work here with our high school students. And we are so excited to bring you the news that even though camp is not going to be happening like normal, you were not going to be able to stop us from having a camp experience. So we will be having a digital camp experience this year. Online camp? Online camp. That's amazing. It's, it's going to be unbelievable. We're going to have speakers. We're going to have games. And when's that going to happen, Caden? July 23rd through the 25th. And if you didn't know, these games are, you're going to be competing against churches all across America in this online Foursquare camp. It's going to be awesome. We are so excited. So make sure you go to our website and you click on the link so that you can sign up. And the best part about this camp, it is absolutely free. Zero dollar. So make sure to sign up. We look forward uh, to enjoying this time together.